Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to do a cheeky little range review for the Thousand Suns. This is going to be a smaller one, but that's because next week we are going to do Chaos Demons. And when I say Chaos Demons, I mean all of them. The whole lot. Every single one. That's probably going to be probably going to be a little bit little bit of a long video but why not let's let's go for it this is like a nice a nice taste of building up so we're not going to cover the zinchin demons because we'll cover those in the next one however we do have uh, do have an interesting little extra thing for the thousand suns which i love and i will say that i have had experience i've had experience with most of these kits because i have assembled quite a few of these for uh, for a friend of mine so I've actually messed with these, which is nice. And before you ask, yes, I put them together as they are supposed to be put together. They didn't want any kit bashes, so I was very good, and I just put them together as they should be, even if it did destroy my soul in the process. No, that's not fair. It's all fine. Do what you like. So, first up, we have, of course, got Magnus the Red. And I have to say, this is a model that has... It just, does now, it just doesn't get old for me. It just never gets old. It takes away my ability to speak as well. I still think this is really nicely done. The wings are, are like especially a, uh, a plus point for me. I think they're really, really good looking wings. I like the symbols that have been uh, kind of inscribed on the larger feathers towards the ends. The bits of armor that kind of go up them as well is a really nice touch. There's just such a such a instantly recognizable silhouette from Magnus the Red. There's a lot of winged stuff in both 40k and Age of Sigmar. For the most part, you can tell what something is at a glance by the way it's been posed, by the way the wings have been positioned, and Magnus is, is one of those. Like, you just know what he is the minute you see him on the tabletop. I honestly think, the wings especially, one of the one of the nicest sets that Games Workshop have done. That's not to say there's anything wrong with the rest of the model, the rest of the model is super solid as well. Loads of really, really nice details all over this. The little ports in the skin from where his power armor used to be, that's a really nice touch. You can see top uh, top screen left there, the little the little port in the in the shoulder, I really like that. The kind of flamey fire effects on the uh, on the, I forget the name of it. Is it a cop copesh? You know what I mean. The bladed thing, the sword sword staff thing. They're not too overblown. I think there's been a, a habit, especially recently, of kind of really slathering on that kind of fire effect, and it's not so much of a problem on this one. It's relatively subtle. It could be a lot more extreme. The eye on the book and like the little symbol hanging off the hanging off the belt is really nice. Also, some really nice cloth on Magnus as well. That 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 kind of uh, that loincloth thing on the front there, that's really nicely done. I, I really like the the overall shape of it. It just looks very very natural. It's really nice. Again, little details like the uh, the bird face on the back of that that shin armor. Just little things all over this model that just stand out as being a little bit special. I mean, it's what you'd want, it's what you'd hope for from a Primarch, but still, it's it's still nice to see. Now, I have to admit, I'm always surprised to see that bit of cabling in his right arm, because I don't remember reading anything about him having anything like that going on, but whether that's been done just as a kind of like a, just as like a bit of extra, a bit of extra something going on, or whether that is actually like a cybernetic implant under the skin i don't know i mean maybe for the ports for the armor but it's only on that arm you can really see it it does provide a bit of extra texture and detail though that i quite like the way the bird skulls are pushing out of the leg armor as well is a really nice touch i think they've done a super good job with that as well now of all the heads i have to admit i think i think i like top right top right i think is the one i like the most the one i missing but still having space for two if that makes sense that just looks better to me than the single eye. And I do like the kind of mask on the other one, but I don't know. It I it just doesn't look it doesn't look Magnus to me. I, I just feel like he's I, I feel like he's someone who always has the face exposed and the mask doesn't really fit my kind of internal idea as to what he would do in terms of wearing like a helmet or something like that. So it's 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 got to be just be the the scarred eye and the open eye for my money. There is of course still still the debate of the uh, of the chest horns, but honestly I like it. I like it. it harkens back to some uh, some cool artwork, and it again provides kind of a unique 
a unique look and feel to the model, especially from different angles. Overall, he's just a super, super solid model. One that I think they've done a, a genuinely really good job with. Might have my personal preferences in terms of head and, and weapon and the like, but you know what? All of it, all of it looks really, really good. All of it does. I don't think there's a bad part of this model for me. The hair as well, absolutely magnificent, as you would expect. Now moving on from Magnus, we've got Araman, and this is one of my favourite Chaos models, just, just in general. Just in general, I think this is an absolutely stunning model. The helmet is absolutely perfect. The multiple horns coming out of the, uh, coming out of the helmet itself look really good. I like the kind of cloth strips that are dangling from either side of the eyes. It just looks so cool. You've got a bit of that kind of fiery, flamey effect coming from underneath the disc, but it's relatively unobtrusive and it works really well for what the model is. And for me personally, way better than any sort of just like transparent stand. I just don't like those. They don't really, they don't really hit the spot for me still. So that's like a nice compromise. You could, I guess, do something a little bit different if you wanted to put him on a larger base, maybe to do something a bit more scenic or have him going over some ruins or something. But I honestly think that works pretty well. More plus marks for the uh, for the cloth as well. The multiple layers like the robe and then you've got the cloak over the top and it all works super well. It looks really, really nice. A lot of detail on this model to paint though. For such a small model, there's, there's quite a lot going on really. Although the cloth, I reckon the cloth would take dry brushing so nicely. Absolutely can't beat the uh, the four exhaust backpack again. I just, there's just little things on a lot of the uh, Thousand Suns range that it just looks so good. It just looks so good. There's so much like detail and, and finery and it's all got this really nice kind of overarching theme that they managed to implement into almost everything. Like there's there's nothing in the Thousand Suns range. I know it's a smaller range comparatively, uh, quite a bit smaller in fairness, but it's so, it is so cohesive. It's so completely like... Everything is in line with itself. Everything looks completely completely intertwined, I guess. With stuff like the Death Guard stuff. Yes, they all look like Death Guard, but of course you've got random growths. You've got some that have got like a, a backpack that's made up of 18 chimneys, and you've got others that are like dripping goo, and there's maybe tentacles coming out of one guy's face, but nothing coming out of the guy next to him, or someone else has got a horn sticking out of the gut, whereas the other guy just has got a mouth where his gut is. The Thousand Suns is so much more like tight and coherent than that. And don't get me wrong, I love both styles, but uh, I just love these models. I just love them. They look so good. They really, really do. I mean, look at the front of that cloth. Oh, it's so nice. The big collar as well. Excuse you, Cher. I really, really like it. It's just so good. So good. Following on from Araman, we've got the Exalted Sorcerers. And I have to admit, I really, really love bits of all of them. But there's just... <sighs> Overall, there, there are bits that I'm just not entirely sure of. So this guy's got to be my favourite because oh, there's just something about all of him. All of him looks cool. Really cool backpack. I like the uh, I like the kind of elongated bird skulls that are going on there. Even if there's no like obvious vent at the end, it still looks really cool. The way the cloth all follows a, a similar a similar shape, including the ones at the front with the beaks open. It looks like the uh, the kind of tassels on the front of his armor are reaching out to bite you, which is weird and creepy and scary. We like that a lot. The mutated arm is a really nice touch, and it's such a cool staff. That's such a cool staff. Like the twisted end looks really nice. The feathers coming out of the part of the arm there as well. Nice little touch. I really like this one. I will say this lad is possibly possibly my least favourite of them. Just because he looks he looks great from the side. You get a really nice sense of movement from the side that he's got his arms out and his legs hanging down and he's drifting forward because again they've done a decent job with the the cloth flowing so it looks like he it looks like he's in motion but he doesn't look like he's from motion from the front to me he looks too static from the front he just looks locked in place it doesn't really translate all that well which is a shame because look at him like that and you can see that he's shifting forward Probably it's speed as well. It looks like it's it's like a quick ramp up of speed from the uh, the curling smoke coming out the bottom, but from the front, 
he just doesn't have that same sense of movement. Not least because the the way the smoke has been sculpted underneath, like the kind of I don't know, like psychic energy or whatever, it's in a weird curve that doesn't actually suggest forward movement. It just looks like he's kind of held there, which just doesn't work quite as well. And it's a shame because there are elements of this elements of this sorcerer that I really really like. The helmet is weird but cool, but I really like the uh, the extra decoration on the power pack there like that kind of finned approach around the vents and then you've got the crest sticking out the the top of it it looks really cool and again that's a really awesome staff i really like the staffs that they've done for the exalted sorceress they all look really cool in their own right but again you kind of got this interlocking mechanism thing on that staff which is which is really nice i really like it but overall just doesn't hit the same spot doesn't hit the same spot as this as, uh, as as this guy here. Now it's worth pointing out you can build these in different configurations, but there's like different base base models for them. So like this particular body with the legs hanging down, it's always to me going to look a bit static because you've got that kind of floaty smoke at the bottom, and it just looks a bit held in place. The 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 <laughs> the power pack on this is ridiculous. I really like it, but I don't necessarily like it. On a Thousand Suns Sorcerer, weirdly. Also, one of the weaker helmets as well, for my money, that one. It's, uh, yeah, I, I like I like the idea of it, but I don't know. It doesn't... It Maybe it just doesn't work on this particular one, because he's supposed to be moving forward, and he... Like, the flames don't reflect that. Maybe that's why it is. I will say that the lad on disc is quality, with his multiple arms... Weakest of the staffs, not the best staff, although the weird kind of growth on the haft is kind of cool. I will say the power pack works pretty decent on that guy. That works okay. The uh, the, the disc is not quite as fancy as Araman's, of course, because it wouldn't be as fancy as Araman's, but it still looks nice. Overall, overall pretty solid. Pretty solid, and I do like the way the uh, book is held up by the chains, or like the book is hovering but still attached by the chains. It's a nice touch. Overall, it's a solid kit. Not one that I've had uh, had chance to build myself. Um, I have put Araman and Magnus and the Rubric and the Terminators as well. Um, but yeah, the it's also it also looks to me like a very good source of bits for just for just fun, cool conversions for for other thousand suns things. It, it's it's quite nice. It looks quite nice to me. Also. Quite the well packaged sprue as well. Got got to give them got to give them props for for good sprue management. Now we also have the Scarab Occult Terminators, which I really like. These I love them. I mean, I love me some Terminators anyway, but I especially love the Scarab Occult ter Terminators. Like based off the Tartarus Terminators, the fact that they are clearly you know descended from a different mark of terminator armor than your standard chaos space marines is a really nice touch just like the way that the uh the death guard stuff there's a repeated theme of like cataphracty type terminator armor i like that these are kind of tartarus based they 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 just look great they just look absolutely great there's a bunch of cool little bits of variation between the helmets the trim on them all looks really solid I wouldn't like to paint them, to be honest. Well, no, I probably would like to paint them, but it would take a while, I I, I suspect. I'm not sure which way round I'd want to do it, because there's so much... There's so much trim. There's so much going on, on uh, on some of the chest pieces, at least. I wouldn't, I'm not sure whether I'd go like, do the gold first, or do the blue first, and then the gold, because I've seen people suggest doing it either of those two ways which makes it a bit tricky but they do just look so good even if they're even if their chainsaws don't make a huge amount of <laughs> sense how do they even work there's not enough space in there for the teeth to go around we don't need to worry about that let's face it that's something that's just never been a thing anyway yeah but overall just a just a super solid kit with some great looking units worth mentioning as well the uh the missile launcher on the one i love the style of that I absolutely love the style of it. It looks great. There's just some really, really nice details on them. Nice and chunky. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Again, again, pretty decent sprue as well. Pretty decent sprue. Good amount of extra bits as well. It's I, I, I like I like any sprues. Any sprues that give you uh give you some extras to play with. I, I like it. I like it.
And of course we have the classic Rubric Marines, which again, it's just that thing of there's so much like there's so much like really nicely done filigree and trim and yeah, they 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 just they just nailed them. They just absolutely nailed them. A nice variety in the uh nice variety in the in the power packs as well. You've got some of the kind of bird heads, you've got others where the vents are being held by claws, just little things to distinguish each one. Like the head crests are similar, but there are little just little variations in, in, in all of them. And it's it's just a really, really nicely designed kit. The uh the the bolters having that that extra that kind of extra detail on them as well. They're they're just really nicely done. Really nicely done. I reckon this is one of those kits that like you know even even years down the line are probably still gonna look decent. Everything is nice and crisp. It's yeah, I I, I can't help but love them. It, it honestly tempts me. This is an army that tempts me fairly frequently. The thing is, I love to kit bash stuff, and I don't know, I don't know what else I would even do to these. I probably wouldn't do anything. And the thing is, kit bashing is such a big part of what kind of what brings me joy in the hobby that the idea of doing a full army without doing much of it it's not something that I don't I don't know whether I would enjoy it as much but on the other hand when the models look this good do you even need to well do you even need to anyway for the most part no it's just because you want it to be something that you enjoy but oh, they they're just super solid looking the eye in the palm ah oh, I love them absolutely love them something else that I love is this ugly <laughs> this ugly mess here so this is the mutalith vortex beast and the thousand tons can have one of these which is which is cool it's a great model it's a great model i'll not have a word said against it i've got one of these admittedly mine's assembled in a weird way i don't know why i'm saying that as though you'd be surprised mine's assembled in a weird way because it's uh, <laughs> because i've used the face from the mutalith vortex beast um but I've used the uh, the swords that are stabbed into the back from the slaughter 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 thing slaughter beast. What's it? What's the other one called? I forget what it's called. Hang on, it'll tell us down here, won't it? It could also be assembled as slaughter brute. That's it. Um, yeah, it, it's got the the sword from the slaughter brute. Uh, and it's got a, like two pairs of wings because, of course, it has. Actually, a really good kit to put together. It's really fun. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I know I've stuck extra stuff to it, but yeah, it's it's a it's a really nice kit, and it just looks so good. It's so weird. It's so eldritch and creepy. Like just the mass of tentacles sticking out of the face. There's no visible eyes, which I love. I love the fact that it doesn't seem like it has any ability to see where it's going. The huge, like, blasphemous chaos symbol on the top. It's so good. It is such a good model. I'm i am genuinely tempted to get a second one and do something else with it. I'd have to repose it a bit because they only have this one pose. That is the one thing I don't like about it, in fairness. It's not very poseable at all. No matter what you build it as, you're looking at that. One, one like one leg down at the front and one up. The back legs go on exactly the same each way. Like there's, there's no way of, there's no way of altering the pose outside of some heavy, heavy like green stuff work, like cutting limbs apart and then putting them back together side of things. But when it looks this good, when it looks this good, it's just ah, oh, great model, great model, love it. Now we also have. We're not covering things like land raiders and predators and stuff. We've covered that in the main chaos thing. Um, but we do also have extras in the form... No, I would not like some help. This is the... This new feature... <laughs> minor tangent. This new feature of... Uh, it looks like you've been on this page for a while. It's not a while. It's like two minutes. Maybe five. But still, it's not that long, really, before it starts hassling you. And uh, I tell you what, let's get the other one out of the way. There we go. <sighs> So, we also have the Zangor, Zangor, Enlightened, and the Zangors. Now, these confuse me. I believe these are still applicable to the Thousand Suns. I believe they are. 
Um, I've not seen anything to suggest that they're not. I don't have that codex on me. I should have checked in the uh, in the 40k app, shouldn't I? That would have been a good idea. But I'm reasonably certain that these are still things you can take. Um, but there's no there's no Thousand Suns box for them anymore, which is confusing to me. I I just assumed that there were, but there isn't. And I'm sure I remember. I am 99.9% .9 sure I remember seeing boxes for 40k that had uh, that had like chainsaws available. In fact, wait, the start collecting. Surely that'll that that had that had Zangors in. They're in the are they not in the banner anymore? Let's say, get out of it. Go away. Start collecting Thousand Suns. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's an easy way to check. I'll leave. I might as well leave that in. You can you can see me being an idiot. That's fine. So yeah, the the Zangors in the Start Collecting Thousand Suns box, they've got chain swords and bolt pistols. But the box is not of like just the standard kind of Thousand Suns Zangors box does not seem to be available anymore, which is a bit a bit off to be honest because yeah, the Zangors look fine, but they where's where's the 40k options? Like that that's what it boils down to for me. They look they look fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I do quite like the Zangles. But these guys don't have 40k weapons. They've got fantasy weapons. They've got shields rather than rather than bolt pistols. I mean, quite clearly, those guys are slightly different. And they fit a bit better. You know, they've got the correct armaments for a start. And that sprue is clearly still being made. Um, there's clearly still, you know, Zangle sprues with the extras being made. So why they're not listed? Because they're not listed under Thousand Suns at all. If you go through. They're just not here. Which is kind of crappy to be honest. It's kind of crappy. Oh, the exalted sorcerers have uh have gone out of stock since I started recording this video. That's interesting. They were on this first page <laughs> not that long ago. Oh dear. But yeah, the the Zangles look the Zangles look good. They look great. Um but like I say, they are better with the chain swords and the bolt pistols because they fit in better. The base models are nice, they look cool, I do like them, but I mean that just simply does not line up quite as well as that. And it's uh, it's it's kind of unfortunate that they seem to have taken that option away. Um Yeah, it just just a bit just a bit disappointing that to find that out because I hadn't realised that they had that they had vanished, but they have, which is which is a real pity. Overall, though, overall, by the way, favourite out of the entire range, it's got to be Araman. It's got to be Araman, or oh man, oh, all the Terminators. It's got to be Araman. It's just look, he's just he's just iconic, absolutely iconic, and he looks great, looks so good. Um, but yeah, overall, Thousand Suns range is really, really good. I mean, it's obviously very small. There are very few, like, dedicated Thousand Suns models. But what they have are, are for me, just such high quality. Like, they're so well, they're so well designed, so well sculpted. They, they capture the feel absolutely perfectly. There's a really nice coherency to them with nice bits of variation still just just like a 10 out of 10 range a 10 out of 10 range for my money and one that constantly calls to me just really really solid overall question is do you like them good range bad range what is your favorite model out of the lot let me know in the comments down below in the meantime feel free to click all the things patreon video subscribe all that stuff click it if you like don't click it if you don't want to and as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you'd like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.